another edition of the IPW Insider, the ongoing video series that keeps you up to date on all things IPW. I'm your host and IPW commentator, Mark Franchise. And from the Crucial Squared Circle podcast, the award-winning half of IPW's award-winning commentary team, chairwoman of IPW's Mental Wellness Task Force, and new IPW champion... I'm Davison Sarai. Well, Davison, we have another IPW event in the books, and Undisputed went down at the Trinity Gym in Kalamazoo, Michigan on Saturday, November 20th. Davison, it may sound like we are exaggerating when we say these things, but if you're a fan of IPW, you have to see this show. So many long-standing issues were addressed in some unforeseen twists that nobody saw coming. The night started with Death Threat Army members, Adam Wick, Jack Price, and the lovable psychopath Tommy Vendetta in the ring. Wick and Vendetta announced that they were coming after the IPW tag team titles. Jack Price, on the other hand, was thinking about a title of his own. Tommy Vendetta was giving excuses for Aaron Orion's absence at the event, but Jack Price interjected, suggesting that Orion was actually ducking, as the two have unfinished business regarding the IPW title. Jack reminded everybody that he had never used his rematch against Karim, having dropped the IPW title to him back at Valor. Jack said that he was tired of waiting, and that he was inserting himself into the world title main event later that night. Davison, Adam Wick, and Tommy Vendetta didn't know what to make of Jack Price's comments towards the DTA leader, Aaron Orion. The first match featured Adam Wick and Tommy Vendetta taking on the unlikely duo of Jimmy Hype Shalwin and his new protege, Jason DeMilo. Jimmy Shalwin was recently seen telling IPW fans that as a veteran, he was considering passing his knowledge down to a younger athlete, and it appeared that he and DeMilo had come to some sort of an arrangement. While the DTA was a well-oiled machine, as always, there was visible friction between Hype and DeMilo, who kept tagging himself into the match against Shalwin's wishes. While both teams looked impressive, ultimately the miscommunication between Hype and DeMilo spelled disaster, as Vendetta hit a massive pile driver to secure the win for the DTA. After the match, both men were showing signs of frustration, leading to Jason DeMilo physically assaulting his supposed mentor. He could be heard blaming Hype for costing him his first loss while absolutely pounding on Hype. Surprisingly enough, Kaelin released comments after the match indicating that he was willing to leave that fracas behind him and to move forward as DeMilo's continued mentor. Franchise, as chairwoman of the Mental Wellness Task Force, feel compelled to say that this seems like an insane idea. If things don't work out, Hype may find himself in another feud with a much younger talent, so time will tell. In the second bout of the evening, we saw Hazen Knight Beckett return to IPW, taking on a member of the gold team, the owner of a luxurious head of hair himself, Kyler Coleman. Fans may remember Kyler having friction with fellow gold team member Chad Alpha at previous shows. Add to that fact that Brutus Atwell was missing at the time, and the original owner of the gold team was nowhere to be found and it's easy to see why there's been such a friction between team members. Having a numbers advantage and more experience in his pocket, it seems safe to assume that Coleman would take the victory from Beckett. That was not to be. Chad Alpha inserted himself into the action at one point, and with what appeared to be support for his team member, knocked Beckett out with a single punch. But to everybody's surprise, followed that up with a shot to Coleman as well, possibly working out his frustrations due to their ongoing friction. He did the unthinkable and grabbed Beckett, dragging his lifeless body on top of Coleman, giving Hazen Knight Beckett his first big win in Aikido. After the match, Chad Alpha could be heard saying, now we're even, signifying that he and Coleman were now on the level. The gold team exited ringside, and before Beckett could leave the ring, we heard familiar music, and it was the cacophony of terror. Big Ray Torres making his way to the ring for yet another unprovoked attack. Davison, will we ever find out what the motivation is for all these assaults from Ray Torres? And it was around this time that we began to notice a mysterious figure sort of sliming his way around ringside. That was not the last time we would see that slimy individual on this night. Next up, the fans retreated to none other than the Michiana champion himself, the ultra-successful Derek Wolf, who came to ringside to announce he was holding yet another $500 open challenge. Before anybody could take the challenge, however, he produced a list of names of competitors who were not allowed to face him for the title. Franchise, he proceeded to list almost every person who's ever wrestled for IPW. No doubt, and the crowd was expressing its displeasure, chanting boring and calling Derek Wolf a coward and a paper champion, until IPW's homeless hero, the magic man himself, Felix Morio, made his way to the ring and demanded his $5. Fans may recall that Derek Wolf owed Felix $5 for washing his car back at Grave Danger 2, and according to Felix, he got stiffed on the payment. Wolf then made a counteroffer, saying he would pay Felix a whole $10 and defend his Michiana championship against Felix or to anyone who could defeat Morio. This is when IPW fans were introduced to the Midwest mad dog, Hyena Hagen. Hagen made an immediate impression on the IPW 
WPW audience with his combination of brutality, speed, and power. However, the legend of the Magic Man continued to grow as Felix pulled out more of that Morio magic and rolled up the hyena for a three count and a victory. To almost nobody's surprise, Derek Wolf immediately stormed the ring to attack Felix with his trusty iPad and had the referee start the match while Felix was at a disadvantage. Felix somehow kicked out of the iPad shot, but soon fell victim to the closing bell, giving Derek Wolf another sleazy and easy victory. There was one bit of good news though, as Derek Wolf more than paid on his promise. Before leaving the ring, he made it rain $100 bills all over Felix, and for God knows what reason, when Felix regained consciousness, he shared more than a few of those bills with some lucky fans. One has to wonder, Davison, does Felix now feel that the debt has been paid, or does he feel that there's unfinished business between him and Derek Wolf? Ladies and gentlemen, it's your Michiana champion, Derek Wolf, coming to you from one of my vacation residences in California wine country. And I figure what better place to do this than in front of my Christmas tree as we get into the spirit for IPW Cold War this coming Saturday. But before that happens, there are a few things that I need to get off of my chest, namely involving that trash Felix Morio. See, I just got word from IPW management that Felix Morio is the new number one contender for my Michiana Championship, which quite frankly is nothing but bullshit because I had beat him already at IPW Undisputed. However, IPW management feels that he did not get a fair shot at that show. Now, that's not my fault that Felix is stupid enough to accept a title match as soon as he just finishes another match against that hyena character. That's not my fault. That is not my fault. But apparently, apparently IPW management thinks that it's not fair. So they are naming him the number one contender for my Michiana championship. Now, when I'm not defending my belt night in and night out, it is hanging above the mantle which lies above the fireplace in my residence mansion in Scottsdale, Arizona. I guarantee you that Felix doesn't have a mantle. Felix doesn't have a fireplace in the dumpster that he lives in. There is no championship recognition in the man that is Felix Morio. There is no success like there is with Derek Wolf. Which brings me to my next point. Apparently... Felix is going to be captaining a team at IPW Warfare, which will be going on against the team that I will be captaining at IPW Warfare. And you better believe if Felix's team loses, number one contender or not, there is no way he is getting a shot at my Michiana Championship. You can bank on that. Next up was the moment fans were waiting for as recently crowned Queen of the Kingdom and IPW Champion Davison Sarai made her regal approach to the ring. My regal approach to the ring franchise. I had recently released several promos offering an invitation to anybody who wanted to challenge me for my title. And the first person to take me up on that offer was none other than the ratchet one herself, Crystal Lane. Before the match began, Davison, you announced to everyone who would listen that you consider it disrespectful to be referred to as the women's champion. You make an interesting point, saying that none of the male title holders in the company are called the men's champions. And you threw down the gauntlet saying that you will only be referred to from this day forward as IPW champion. While the Ratchet royalty from Detroit showed a lot of heart, you were able to show more of what won you the title in the first place, revealing that you are becoming quite the cunning competitor and champion. After viciously attacking the legs of her opponent throughout the match, and with a little bit of assistance from the top rope, you made your opponent submit to the figure four, thus retaining the IPW championship. Davison, it's very early in your title reign, but by the looks of things, you could actually be on the track to become the next dominant champion in IPW. Do you have any word on who your opponent may be at IPW? IPW Cold War? Well, I can tell you who it definitely won't be. That's that underachiever, Randy West. Hopefully it will be somebody who actually deserves a shot. After the break, fans were treated to a three-way match where returning competitors Dean Hendricks and Aaron Kaiser were set to face the human wrecking ball, the septic tank of human sorrow, Big Ray Torres. It's worth noting that this was Ray Torres' first sanctioned match since Forged in Fire. Didn't last long as he was able to annihilate both Kaiser and Hendricks quicker than a hiccup. Poor bastards never stood a chance. The fans were then treated to a match between crowd favorites, the Colonel of Clapping Cheeks, and a star on the rise, LaDon Sanders, and the Scourge of the Swamp and Gold Team member 
Brutus Atwell. Davison, it's interesting to note Chad Alpha and Kyler Coleman appeared to be coexisting peacefully, suggesting that perhaps the bad blood between them had actually been settled earlier. Sanders was, of course, fresh off the biggest victory of his career, having defeated Myron Reed at Grave Danger 2. And he had some extra pep in his step as he came to the ring with both KFC and Popeye's Chicken. The fans definitely did not seem to mind. As usual franchise, the fans couldn't wait to sink their teeth into his juicy white and dark meats, as gluttonous fans at ringside could be seen alternatingly shoving greasy chicken bones into their mouths and performing chicken grease handmade buttholes to celebrate their hero. It would come as a surprise to absolutely no one that Brutus Atwell quickly became fixated on LaDon's meat. That fixation ultimately led to his untimely demise. The fans were treated to a tremendous match between the two as Sanders used his speed and agility to combat the brute force and slimy alligator fighting style of Atwell. To be fair, Franchise, he is a disgusting swamp monster, and to simply exist in the swamp implies that you have to be double tough. Sorry, continue. As I was saying, one of the highlights of the evening and possibly in IPW history was when LaDon Sanders leapt from nearly 20 feet onto the entire goal team before the action found its way back to the ring. At one point, it appeared that Atwell was on his way to victory, but he was suddenly distracted by a bucket of chicken sitting in the corner of the ring. He tossed LaDon's limp carcass onto the mat and began feasting on the juicy, succulent breasts and thighs of Sanders. And his gorging allowed Sanders enough time to recover and strike the death blow against Brutus Atwell, hitting his cheek clapper for the huge victory. Another huge victory goes to Ladon Sanders, making three in a row. And one would have to think with the caliber of these wins that Ladon might be getting into position for a title shot. This loss led to immediate irritation for the goal team, as there once again appeared to be friction mounting. Franchise, this is about the time we caught a further glimpse of the slimy mystery man in mustard from earlier in the show. He appeared to be taking notes of some sort. Next up, we had a returning Anderson Knight facing the warrior of information himself, Chad Alpha. The gold team members stayed at ringside throughout the match, as one would expect. Fans may remember that Anderson Knight was actually offered a spot on the gold team earlier this year, which he promptly rejected. It's possible that part of Alpha's motivation in this match was to get some modicum of revenge against Knight on behalf of the entire gold team for what they likely saw as a rejection. Knight has been undefeated since returning to IPW and has looked nothing but impressive, and his momentum continued on this night while Kyler Coleman attempted to interfere on Chad Alpha's behalf. It actually led to his teammate's defeat. A furious warrior of information began screaming at Coleman, even threatening to knock his head off. Just then, at that perfect moment, the mystery mustard man note taker reappeared and finally introduced himself. Yeah, he was the slime ball who owns Levant Pawn Shop in Metro Detroit, Bobby Levant. Fans may recall me describing a green ring left on my appendage after wearing a cheap ring from the sleazy pawn whores establishment. Levant then told a confused crowd that several months ago, a man came into his pawn shop to pawn some documents and contracts and never made any payments on the loan. As a result, he took ownership of those contracts, and it turns out those documents made him the new leader of the gold team, which was immediately renamed the Golden Standard. His next order of business was proclaiming Chad Alpha as the true team captain of the Golden Standard. And in a shocking twist, Levant offered Alpha the opportunity to choose which of his teammates would actually be eliminated from the Golden Standard. Levant said that he needed to shake things up and that somebody had to go. To no one's surprise, Alpha immediately pointed at Kyler Coleman. Then, in a twist, that nobody saw coming, he immediately turned to sucker punch Brutus Atwell and was joined by Kyler Coleman as they laid their boots to the Swamp Man, an apparent former teammate. Davison, nobody could have seen this coming, and I don't think anybody in their right mind would have ever guessed that Atwell, of all people, would be the one removed from the group, but maybe there's a greater plan at play. Just before leaving Rigside, Levant left one more message saying, I'm not done tonight. Next up, we saw half of the IPW Tag Team Champions, the barely tan Terry Van Avery, come to ringside to make a statement regarding the tag titles. He and Josh Raymond have both missed substantial ring time due to injuries, and Terry announced that Josh Raymond was again not in attendance. Terry said he was feeling some pressure to relinquish the titles, titles that he won with a man who threatened retirement and who Van Avery had actually talked off the ledge on Josh Raymond. That's right, Davison. Terry Van Avery said that IPW management told him and Raymond that their time was up and that they must defend or vacate their titles. And yet another shocking twist for the night, Van Avery chose to defend the titles himself. This led to none other than the subscribers coming to ringside to make the challenge, which of course immediately led to the supposed YouTube sensation Forever Young and his perpetually annoyed tag team partner, Top Gun, coming to ringside to plead their case for the title match. While it was unclear who would be in the match at first, it was beyond clear that Van Avery was done waiting around as he took the fight to all four men. As you might imagine, the numbers game quickly took over as the four friends or former friends 
stomped Van Avery out, leaving the two teams to face each other for the titles. While Van Avery was absent from the action, fans were treated to a surprisingly cohesive and competitive tag match, even showing signs of cooperation between Forever Young and Top Gun. As the action was ramping up, the fans and even us franchise seemed to have forgotten that Van Avery was still part of the match, which allowed him to sneak back into the ring at a perfect moment to hit his finish and magically retain the IPW tag titles. I don't know if you celebrate franchise, but this could be considered a Christmas miracle. After the match, normalcy was restored as total chaos broke out among Forever Young, the subscribers, and Top Gun. Forever Young went so far as to blame everything on Ryan Siss, demanding that KJ Reynolds attack his partner and friend, which he did without much hesitation. More chaos ensued, once again featuring the educated feet of Top Gun. Therefore, Davison, the first match for the January 8th event in Kalamazoo, Warfare has been announced, and it will be a fatal four-way between Ryan Sins, KJ Reynolds, Forever Young, and Top Gun. Davison, maybe things can well and truly be settled between these four on January 8th. Finally, it was time for the main event, as fans were excited to see the long-awaited rematch between former IPW champion Jack Price and current and reigning IPW champion Karam. Just as formal introductions were about to begin, Bobby Levant once again sleezed his way to ringside. Much as a snail travels on its own trail of snot, he reminded the audience that he had taken over not just active, but also pending gold team contracts. And he revealed that he was able to pull off one of the greatest coups in IPW history by securing the services of the swag champ, Ren Jones, while also securing Jones his shot at the IPW championship franchise. He announced that Jones would be using his contract right there at Undisputed, making the main event a triple threat for the IPW title. Three of the top athletes in IPW tore into each other in what can only be described as a classic. At points in the match, it appeared that Karam was set to retain, but fans were surprised as Adam Wick and Tommy Vendetta rushed to ringside and attacked their former DTA teammate, Karam brutalizing him with a chair before Vendetta hit a pile driver on the floor. The two seemed to rally around their current teammate, Jack Price, seemingly offering him a clear path to victory. It was then that the DTA's game plan became crystal clear. It was in that moment that Tommy Vendetta revealed himself, turning on longtime brother Jack Price and spiking him with a pile driver before pulling an unconscious Ren Jones over his lifeless body. The referee had no choice but to count this as a pin, and before a shocked and furious Karam could do anything to stop it, Ren Jones was recognized as the winner and new IPW champion. An infuriated Karam attempted to take his revenge out on the Golden Standard, but they were able to escape ringside and to ultimately celebrate the championship win for the newest Gold Standard member. In a moment I never thought I would see, Karam and Jack Price, bitter rivals for well over a year, shook hands in the IPW ring in what appeared to be a sign of mutual respect. Is it possible that Tommy Vendetta's act of betrayal against Jack Price means that Price has actually been formally removed from the DTA? One has to wonder what the ultimate motivation behind Wick and Vendetta's actions might be. Actually, Franchise, the motivation was revealed, as later that night, IPW cameras were able to catch a phone conversation between Tommy Vendetta and DTA leader and interim IPW champion Aaron O'Ryan. It was revealed that O'Ryan ordered Vendetta to attack Jack Price, letting him know that under no circumstances was Price to win the IPW championship. Franchise, the Black Diamond will be in attendance at Cold War on December 4th, and has promised that he will address this entire situation. It appears that O'Ryan successfully enacted his master plan, get the title off of a man he may have been afraid to face, keep the belt away from Jack Price, and put the belt on somebody that he has already defeated at a previous event. Karm, on the other hand, lost his title without actually being defeated, and it now appears that he has one more trick of his sleeve as well. And with that, we now know that Ren Jones will be defending his IPW championship for the first time against former IPW champion Karam live from Trinity Martial Arts in Kalamazoo, Michigan on January 8th at IPW Warfare. IPW has also recently announced two new events for 2022, Heart and Soul, an event honoring those fighting against congenital heart defects on February 12th. 2022. It's also been announced that War on the Shore 2 will be taking place atop the USS LST 393 in Muskegon, Michigan once again. But before all that, Davison, IPW makes its return to everyone's favorite Vandermill Cider in Grand Rapids on Saturday, December 4th for our final event of the year, Cold War. This event will feature Jack Price, LaDon Sanders, Michiana champion Derek Wolf, the Golden Standard, IPW champion Davison Sarai, the returns of Anthony Katina and Mungo, and many more. Tickets are available right now. We will see you this Saturday for IPW Cold War. Cold War.